Is it possible to get 10,000 Primal Gems in 24 hours as a free-to-play player? A question on mine ever since I got Navia on my Claymore Zoni account and ran out of Primal Gems while doing so. In this video, I spent 24 hours of my life exploring various methods to gain Primal Gems to see if I could get 10,000 Primal Gems in 24 hours. And yeah, this is about it really. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, why not consider dropping a like and a sub? But otherwise, let's get straight into the video. Alright, we are back. So we're on the Claymore Zoni account and starting the challenge with 28962 Primal Gems, 0 Intertwine Fate and 0 Acquaint Fate. Hopefully by the end of the video, we will have something that is more than 38962 Primal Gems worth of fates. So the first way to gain Primal Gems is to do daily commissions. This is a classic one, I'm sure everyone knows about it. Alright, so that was one done, but as of version 4.1, we no longer need to do commissions. If we go into the Adventures Handbook, we can see this thing over here where if you do various things in games, such as road crash, exploration, and events, you can automatically finish commissions. Speaking of events, doing events is going to be the fastest way to gain Primal Gems. So that's what I'll be doing now. As for the storyline, since the story doesn't give a lot of Primal Gems and it requires a lot of time to complete, I'm not gonna do the event. And of course, since we are a Claymore Zoni account, this reward is also going to be really helpful. I believe I can just build this instantly. Okay, so 2701, and if we swap this out... What? Whoa! Wow, that's strong! Holy crap! Okay, so there we go. That's it for the event. And if we go over here, as you can see, I can just finish this thing over here and go claim the commissions. All right, so once we've got the commissions, the next thing that we're gonna do to get Primal Gems is we're gonna do some road quest. The road quests are the ones that you see around here with the blue icon. They help unlock the road, gain access to additional areas, which is helpful for exploration. So as you can see over here, our exploration is not quite there yet. But hopefully by the end of the video, I'll get them all to 100%. Okay, so I believe this account, um, we do have a few characters that we need to ascend. Yep, we do have a level 1 Candace. And as you know, if we ascend a character, we do get like a fate and stuff. So there's that. We get ascension done. We are not using these for claim walls only. We're just using it for this thing over here to get a fate. So that's gonna be our first Aquin fate for this challenge. And yeah, we're gonna leave it that for now. But we want level 40. If we get level 40 here, we get a lot of stuff. I think 8 Interwine Fates and 16 Aquin Fates. Here we go, level 0. Just remember this. It will be level 40 soon. I don't really have a specific when exactly soon, but soon. <laughs> so I spent the next hour or so doing major requests around Fontaine. These road quests are important for this challenge as they unlock additional areas to allow 100% completion with a Fontaine. I was able to complete version 4.0 and version 4.1's major road quest before calling it quits for the day. This sends us to about 3 hours into the challenge but with more than 30k Primal Gems and some fates to show for it. So now 1190, 72, 193, it'll be 90 if I eat the food. Verdict R1, 1190, and then we got artifacts, 4 piece night time, got the flower, feather, attack, Geo and crit damage. I actually want to have crit rate. I do have crit rate. All right, close your eyes if you do not want to be triggered. Because I bet it's gonna go on HP. What? I started off the day by doing web events. You can access these through mailboxes or through the special events tab from within the game. They don't give a lot of Primal Gems, but it's better than nothing. There's also the daily logger event, which sometimes gives Primal Gems as a check-in reward. And to top it all off, there's also redeemable codes online which you can use to get Primal Gems. Once in game, I proceeded to start my exploration objectives to get the Primal Gems. Exploration in Genshin Impact can occur in various forms. You can get a chest across Teyvat, which most chests offers anywhere between 2 to 10 Primal Gems, by gathering Hydro Killers to increase the level of the Statue of the Seven, each level granting 60 Primal Gems, by using sigils to upgrade offering systems to obtain Interwine Fates and Acquaint Fates as direct items, and by unlocking Shrine Adepts, which offers 40 Primal Gems for each shrine unlocked. This does not include any achievements or tutorials you unlock by just exploring, which both runs additional Primal Gems. And let's not forget about the trial runs that you can use while testing out limited time event characters. And with a level 18 Fountain of Lucene, level 4 Statue of the Seven, and a few hours of explorations worth of chests collected, I ended day 2 with 31,492 Primal Gems, 2 Intermine Fates, and 9 Acquaint Fates. Day 3 was spent continuing exploration for day 2. There were a few road quests which were time-gated with real-life days, and clearing them will ensure that we clear as much of Fontaine's content as possible. 
Rogue quests are the critical source of Primal Gems in Genshin Impact as they both unlock additional areas while granting more Primal Gems than other Primal Gem gathering methods. So Rogue Quest and Exploration was what I did for the most part. And by the end of day 3, I was level 5 on Fontaine's Statue of the Seven, level 25 on the Fontaine of Lucene, and version 4.0 areas mostly explored. And to top it all off, here's the wishes and the Primal Gems that I've got at the end of day 3. Day 4 was spent on unlocking new content for version 4.1. As version 4.0 was fully cleared, I now have to explore new areas to get additional Primal Gems. The process of collecting Primal Gems was similar to what happened during the previous days. However, these quests gave quite a bit of difficulty due to me playing the game with an artificial rule set. It took quite a while to bypass these artificial rule sets, but eventually I was able to complete the relevant rogue quest and start exploring. At this stage, you might be wondering, why am I collecting all of these chests and hydro killers in such a quick manner? The answer is by using video guides on the internet. There are exploration guides on the internet which allows you to collect all hydro killers, chests and other items of interest in a guided manner. This may not be for everyone depending on your playstyle, but for the sake of the challenge, I've decided to use these guides to save much needed time. By the end of day 4, the statue of 7 is now level 6, the Fontaine of Lucene is level 35, made good progress on Fontaine's wow. version 4.1 exploration, and I'm now sitting with 34,431 Primal Gems, 6 Interwine Fates, and 16 Aquain Fates. Since day 5 was a new month, there were new ways to obtain Primal Gems. There's a shop which can be accessed by pausing the menu, going to shop, and opening the Stardust Exchange within the shop menu. From this menu, you can buy up to 5 Interwine Fates and 5 Aquain Fates with Masterless Stardust. This is not to be confused with Masterless Star Glitters, as Star Glitters have no purchase limit. Here's a clip of me buying two Interwine Fates with 10 Star Glitters to showcase how different currencies operate with a Genshin Impact. Aside from using Paimon's Bargain to get free Fates, I took my chances with the Spiral Abyss. Since my team was relatively well built, I was able to complete floor 12 with 30 stars and obtain 500 Primal Gems. Although it is possible to get 600 Primal Gems from the Spiral Abyss, if you are able to get all 36 stars, most likely your account is really experienced and I'm not too sure why you are watching this video. With the quick Primal Gem sources exhausted, I went back to exploring Fontaine to max out the Fontaine of Lucene and reach level 7 on the Statue of 7. And with day 5 drawing to a close, my account now has 36,630 Primal Gems, 15 Interwine Fates, and 23 Aquain Fates pushing the Primal Gems earned on this account to over 10,000 Primal Gems and almost 14,000 Primal Gems if you include Aquain Fates. Now you might be thinking, isn't there other methods of earning Primal Gems rather than just exploring Fontaine? Yes, there are. Archon Quest will be the most noteworthy method of getting Primal Gems as they follow the main story for Genshin Impact. Completing these quests takes a lot of time but give a good amount of Primal Gems once completed. You can also claim additional rewards in the form of Interwine Fates through the Adventures Handbook. Do note that as of version 4.3, completing Archon Quest is a requirement to unlock additional features within the game. Story Quest follows the journey of specific characters with a Genshin Impact. These can be unlocked by claiming keys after doing commissions and using set keys to unlock the relevant Story Quest for set character. Hangout events are the lighter version of Story Quest. Pretty much the same but require even more time to complete due to them requiring two commission keys for each Hangout event. Genius Invocation TCG is a game mode which can be unlocked by reaching Adventure Rank 32 and completing Prologue Act 3 of the Archon Quest. It's a permanent game mode involving card games and every new level grants Primal Gems. Serenity Teapot is a system in Genshin Impact unlocked by completing the Rogue Quest, a teapot to call home. Once this is unlocked, you can create your home in a small world, reaching higher levels within the Serenity Teapot grants Primal Gems. In addition to this, you can place characters into the Serenity Teapot and create specific furnishings, which doing so grants even more Primal Gems. If that's not enough, there's also the Genshin Impact livestream Primal Gems and new version Primal Gems that you get by simply being in the right place at the right time. Genshin Impact livestreams occur once every few weeks and each livestream will grant you 3 livestream codes totaling to 300 Primal Gems. New version Primal Gems occurs once every new patch. Simply log into the game when there's a new version and get up to 600 Primal Gems. Occasionally, when there's a major issue with Genshin Impact, the game will grant Primal Gems as compensation. These are also known as Apollo Gems, and they usually grant 100 Primal Gems. And finally, completing various tasks in the Battle Pass grants Aquain Fates, which technically can be defined as Primal Gems if you choose to do so. Before I get to the obscure methods of getting Primal Gems, I've got a few honourable mentions. The Adventurer's Handbook is a great way for beginners to progress through the game while getting Primal Gems in the process. Adventure Rank Rewards is also another way to get Primal Gems. You can sometimes get Primal Gems as a level up reward, but Ascension Quest will be the one that gives you the most Primal Gems. This will however increase your world level which makes enemies tougher in getting them. <laughs> There's also these one times domains which can be found in various parts of Teyvat while exploring. These domains grant great rewards on completion, so why not have a look around your roadmap and see if you missed one by accident. 
So that's the most of the ways you could get Primal Gems as a free-to-play player. However, there are some additional ways you could get Primal Gems which are less common than the above mentioned methods. The first method from this category is by participating in the Genshin Impact Twitch livestream. All you need to do is to watch a participating Genshin Impact streamer on Twitch and you'll gain rewards based on your time watch. It's only 30 Primal Gems however and it requires 2 hours to obtain, so you have to decide whether if this is worth your time. The second method is to stream Genshin Impact on Twitch. If you meet the requirements to stream this game, you can get anywhere between 50 to 1900 Primal Gems. It's one of the best methods to get Primal Gems, but the rewards can take significant time investment, which makes this method not available for everyone. There is also the Stellar Reunion, which requires you to not play Genshin Impact for 14 days, and in return, Genshin Impact will provide various items, including Primal Gems, to help get you back on track. You can also participate in various Genshin Impact events or programs. Through these events, it is possible to get anything between 50 to 3000 Primal Gems in the form of a Welkin. On my main account, where I've never wished on the standard or limited event banner, I have this item. So you can rest assured that this item is possible to obtain as a free-to-play player. Even though this is technically the hardest way to gain Primal Gems, this is also the most rewarding since you can get a Welkin for free as a free-to-play player. So if we go over here, we've got 38k, 452 Primal Gems and 15 Interwine Fates. And over here, we've got 24 Acquaint Fates. So in total, that is definitely over 10k Primal Gems worth of Fates and definitely over 15k Primal Gems worth of Fates if you include Acquaint Fates. And of course, just to wrap everything all up, if you look at the map, as you can see, the whole of Fontaine is explored with level 40 Fontaine of Lucene and level 8 Statue of the Seven. Now to find where's the last Hydro Killers before I lose my mind.